one of their all-time greats, to kick off tonight's iHeartRadio album release party for Cheap Trick's new album, In Another World. I'm Jim Kerr. The band is approaching its 50th anniversary, just another couple of years, and In Another World is your 20th studio album. Rick, what comes to mind when I mention those two milestones? Uh, let's see. It can't be true. Um, I can't believe it. Um, I better count them. Let's see. A lot of things come to mind, but just like I never thought about when we started, but uh, let's make more. This is only 20. Well, you've been making more. Uh, Cheap Trick has been on a creative role these past five years. Um, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, this album, uh, In Another World, is your fourth one since 2016. Uh, what sparked you into wanting to continue to go back into the studio, especially since you had seven years in between albums prior to 2016? Our, our lawsuits were final finalized. <laughs> yeah. Because we make records for ourselves, in a way, you know. Uh, nobody's ever clamoring for a cheap trick record except um, Robin and myself. So, uh, you know, we make them because we like to do it. and. Uh, and we're lucky enough. Sometimes we uh, support ourselves or sponsor ourselves. But this uh, last one, we started off on Big Machine Records, and then we moved. Uh, we got signed by BMG, and uh, they seem to be in, really excited about us. So, so I've done like how many interviews have you been doing? Oh God, it's probably about uh, 15, 20 a week. Yeah, well, I've been doing. I did about 50 last week. Well, BMG is one of the biggest record labels on earth. And uh, after all this time, to have a big label come chasing after you had to certainly make you feel great inside. Pretty amazing. It's like, why'd they wait this long? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robin, take us behind the scenes, if you could, um, about recording uh, a new album. Do you specifically write for an album, or is it a matter of we have X amount of songs, let's make an album? I mean, you know, when, when and how does that decision get made? Usually, you know, uh, we start off with about 20 songs, 25 songs, and then we whittle it down and the best of the lot pokes their head up. But um, I think this this record has got some excitement to it because we wrote half the songs in the studio. The songs are more than different. Uh, the new album, Rick, has a very diverse sound. We were We were talking about this before. I mean, stylistically, you go into a lot of different places on this album. Um, it was pretty incredible, you know, sonically what you were able to achieve on this on this new record. Well, we actually started Here Comes the Summer. So we had a we had a, a foundation of stuff and then we just kept adding to it. I mean we recorded like Robin said, you know, twenty, twenty five things or whatever, whittle it down. And then but we kept recording even when we were finished. We did we did Rebel Rebel uh, with Jack Douglas. We did uh, she said, she said, the Beatles song for Howard Stern. We did a, 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 another track for uh, Nielsen, uh, Harry Nielsen. And then we also finished up the, the album. We finished, uh, I think the last one was the uh, Give Me Some Truth, the John Lennon song. We added that at the end. And then even after we added that, then we added uh, Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols to play some stuff on. So it's like we just kept working. And all of a sudden, oh, time to put the record out. Then, oops. The pandemic showed up. You performed work by the Beatles over the years. Everybody knows of your love for the Beatles collectively and individually. What was it about this one, Give Me Some Truth, that made you guys want to take a crack at it? Well, I thought to myself that it was, first of all, I'm a big John Lennon fan, as you know. But at the same time, this song is one of those songs that means more now than it did then. You know, if the last uh, few years that uh, the country's been going through a lot of division and a lot of uh, a lot of nothing, really. And that sort of describes where we're at. And yeah. I thought, why not put that on there? We're not a very politically oriented band, but I think it was time to say something. Yeah, and then have John Lennon give him the credit or the blame. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, Rick, there's there's absolutely no doubt that many people listening or, or watching tonight know about your connection to John Lennon. But then again, there are other people who who don't know i was hoping you would uh share a little of, well, of that uh, experience with us uh during the 
I didn't, we didn't know what the name of the thing was or the record, but John Lennon had been out of the business for a while and he was doing a comeback record with Jack Douglas uh, in New York, which turned out to be double fantasy. Uh, during that recording, uh, he wanted a harder edge to some of the songs Jack did with John. And so they recruited Bunny, our ex drummer, and myself to go and fatten up the tracks. And it was, he already had a singer, so yeah, yeah, what a guy. <laughs> and so uh, we were on tour and we were going to Japan like around that time. And we went into the studio or went to Flutie, New York, and uh, walked in the studio and did two songs with John Lennon and Yoko. You have another, and it didn't Beatle make it connection. on the record. <laughs> you have another Beatle connection, too, don't you? Isn't there a uh, Beatle that yeah, owns one of, few, your, really. one of your guitar? <laughs> yeah, but isn't there a Beatle that owns one of your guitars? Well, yeah, Paul McCartney has uh, plays my left-handed Les Paul that I got years and years ago. And it's like, I had it, it was beautiful, and I'm a guitar collector. And uh, I had it, and I said, I think I mentioned it some guitar magazine that uh, I shouldn't have it. You know, Paul McCartney should have it. <laughs> Somebody that could actually play left-handed. And uh, at first he wasn't interested, but then uh, then he was. And so I, I mentioned it in the magazine, and then uh, th they contacted me and... And uh, now that's what McCartney plays. That's, that's his favorite. And George Martin did one of our records too. He produced uh, All Shook Up. And he also yeah, did, he, uh, he, he made the trek into uh, Illinois to see you guys, didn't he? He, he came to Wisconsin. <laughs> to Wisconsin, huh? Oh. In, in the middle of winter, he and Jeff Emmerich braved three or four feet of snow to come and do a pre production with Cheap Trick. That, I mean, that, uh, you wouldn't even show up for that, Jim. <laughs> you know? But uh, he did. He I showed up in Aberdeen, New Jersey. Yeah. Well, you know, he liked our music and he liked us enough. How did Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols end up uh, playing on, on that track? Well, we were invited to his uh, radio show. For a second time. Yeah. We did, uh, we went and worked with at Jonesy's Jukebox and we knew all the Sex Pistols songs. So we played those with him. Yeah. In the studio. Uh, and then we went another time, uh, Robert and I went to uh, see him for another show. And uh, I brought a guitar with me and we said, uh, I really like the way you play rhythm guitar or whatever, you know, it's the same kind of like me, same like him, like Pete Townsend, like Johnny. Yeah, he's an underrated, I think, guitar player, really. And we started playing together. But I think we started, was it? Well, was it, give me some truth. I yeah, it was, it was give me some truth. And we, he knew all the chords and he played right. He says, why don't you, uh, why don't you, you want to play on a record? Yeah. Then we couldn't get him off the record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not blowing any smoke here. We all know that you're a great, great rock and roll singer. And another you know, great. <laughs> you, can, you, you can deliver, you can also deliver a, you know, a really sweet song with the best Thank of them. You, you. just That's can. That's very kind of you. <laughs> would, you would you agree? I mean, well, <laughs> not you know, everybody. Like I said, we're a diverse band. We do all kinds of stuff. You know? I agree. A man of a thousand voices, and they're all good. <laughs> well, and it took you a while, uh, Rick, to find him. Yes, it, uh, it's, I was I hiding. Just, I just found him yesterday. <laughs> Actually, it, it was. We hadn't seen each other in a while but during this damn pandemic. But yeah, uh, it was. Uh, Robin was, uh, was always been the singer that I, I wanted because I was a songwriter mainly. And it's like, I have perfect pitch, but I have a shitty voice. And, Not necessarily. Uh, you got a unique voice. That's what I meant. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, Robin can do it all. You know, he can, like you said, he can sing this, that, the other, and be credible on every one of them. That's the thing. He's not, he's not like trying to be something that he wasn't. And Robin, uh, he actually took, my father was a, an opera singer, and my father actually gave him one lesson, or maybe Robin gave Changed him a lesson. Changed my life. Using his diaphragm for, sing, you know, for singing, <laughs> of how to mm -hmm. breathe and all this stuff. You, but Robin already knew all that because he was yeah. in choirs and stuff yeah, before. Yeah. But my he, he's my dad was a musician too, and you know he was a fairly good singer. And I guess you know that sort of just seeps into your blood when you're growing up. Do you do any of those operatic uh, vocal exercises before you go on stage? I sure do. I always have. That's one thing I did learn from Rick's dad. Was a warm up routine. And you because did the it, because it. Because it protects your voice and keeps your voice right. in and, shape. And the reason I did that is because I did some shows with his dad. I did a, a, the Mikado with him and uh, also a, sh a show with a, a big orchestra and choir. Uh, and Rick 
did it with me along with the band. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and in order to do Nights in White Satin and stuff like that with an orchestra, which we did do, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I just... Uh, you can do it all. Like an actor would uh, to a movie. That's what I look at things like, you know, I'll be the actor and you write the screenplay and I'll see if I can give it some heart. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.